would like to welcome you to the 2005 Wellsville High School Athletic Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Uh, welcome alumni, inductees, presenters, friends, family, and guests. Uh, tonight we have 17 inductees. They range from the graduating class of 1920 to 1995. This is our second in class of inductees. Our initial class of inductees was the 2004 class presented last February. In beginning, I would like to briefly uh, name the inaugural class, 2004. It was Byram D. Beacom, 1938. Bob Russell, 1938 to 41, Russ Carter, 42 to 45, Bob Dawson, 67 to 81, Bevo Francis, 51, 52, Vess Jackson, 39 to 42, Vicki Pulley Stokes, 84 to 87, Chris Thornton, 64, to 66. Bob, yeah, I got Bob Campbell. Bob, I believe I got Bob Campbell, 31 to 40, 38 to 41. The uh, Athletic Hall of Fame <coughs> was something that many of us thought about for many years, but nobody acted upon it. And finally, in the spring of 2003, uh, Jim Brown, who was superintendent of the schools at that time, asked, uh, I believe, uh, Joe Serace and John Martin to come in and discuss the idea uh, one, one additional time. I know I've ha I had had discussions with Jim for many years previous about having an athletic hall of fame, but we, n we had never been able to uh, get it started. But in the spring of 2003, those, those gentlemen set everything into motion, and tonight you can see the <clears throat> the results of their efforts. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to present uh, Steve Creator to do the first inductee. We have a little change in the program here because of a commitment. Uh, the presenter, our esteemed Mayor Joe Serace, got a phone call from the Prime Minister of China. He has to figure out what he's going to do about nuclear war and he's been called in to do this but no seriously Joe has to go uptown and do a couple things with our alumni ceremonies going on so Joe would you come up and give the presentation for John Henry Martin Steve told me I had to do this in three minutes I can't read all this in three minutes I'm gonna have to do five minutes you know, I, I was, it's an honor to be here tonight to introduce John Henry Martin. Uh, John is uh, not only a good classmate, a good, I played ball with him, but he's a great friend of mine. And we always remain friends throughout, through 1955, John, maybe before, huh? 50 years today. I'll tell you, that's a long time. But I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. And not only that, John, I think you look great tonight. You look good, John. Let me, let me start. John Henry Martin graduated with the high school, Wellsville High School class of 55, where he lettered in football, basketball, and track. He was chosen the most valuable player in football and track that year, both sports under Coach Al Checkler. The 1954 football team finished 3-6, and six, with three of these losses coming from a team that went 10-0 and 0 and finished in the top 10 of the state ranking. In the nine games, John Henry gained 1,013 yards, averaging 7.5 yards per carry and three touchdowns. In 1954, he made first team all county. It was chose to play in the Ohio-West Virginia All-Star Game. During that game, he had touchdown runs of 89 yards, 57 yards, and a 100-yard kickoff return. He was voted the most valuable player for the Ohio team. John Henry played only one year of varsity football. John Henry played in two different Division I universities. 
Cincinnati, and Kent State. He then joined the Army, and while stationed in Fort Eustis, Eustis, Virginia, he played for the base team, which he played in a service championship game against the Quantico Marines in the Tangerine Bowl in, at L Orlando, Florida. His team won 25-24. John Henry went on to play professional football with the Hamilton Tiger Cats in Canada. The Syracuse Stormers in New York then finished two years with the Wheeling Ironmen, then returned, retired from football in 1965. During his years in high school, he participated in the high hurdles, the 180-yard low hurdles, the 220-yard dash, the 880-yard relay, and in a broad jump. He qualified for state in the 180 low hurdles, finishing third best with a time of 19.9 seconds and 10th in the broad jump. John Henry holds a school record for the low hurdles with a time of 20.2 seconds, is a member of the 880 relay team of Fred Frost, Joe Serace, and Tom Reed. They set the high point, he, John Henry, was the high point man in 1955 track meet. He was in the Army. He represented Fort Eustis in the 440-yard intermediate hurdles at the Penn Relays and also was the decathlon champion at the AAU meet in Virginia. John Henry is married to Vanetta Hawkins Martin. They have three children, Sean Christopher, who graduated from Akron University, is in the construction engineer. Dana Michelle, a, a graduate of Shawnee State University, is an occupational therapist at the Columbus Hospital. John Michael, who will graduate from Wellsville this year and also placed, played three sports. John Michael placed seventh in the state track meet throwing the shot put. John Henry and Vanita have also three grandchildren. John Henry is proud to be a member of those who helped organize the Wellsville Hall of Fame. Congratulations, John Henry. We appreciate having you there. Should I um, do a Heisman pose? <laughs> it's great. Hey, I'm really very, very proud and uh, emotional. I, I cry at things like this, but, <laughs> but I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> but I thank you. I thank uh, the committee and all the people involved, and I hope we continue on because there's a lot of good athletes here in Wellsville. Thank you. Thank you. Our next inductee, Mr. Greg Arbaugh, graduated from Wellsville High School in 1944 as a half-year student where he started football and a basketball player. Greg was captain of the football team in 1943 and captain of the basketball team in 42 and 43. His honors included all county honorable mention for football in 42 and all county and all state honorable mention in 1943. He was the first male from Wellsville High School to score 200 points in a basketball season. After graduation, Greg joined the Navy and was in the Pacific Theater during World War II. He is a charter member of the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. After the war, Greg attended Adrian College and graduated in 1950. Greg received his master's degree from Michigan in 1956. He later became the athletic director at the high school and college level. Greg retired as a professor numeratus from Adrian College, and he was inducted into their Hall of Fame in 1982. He is married to Dorothy McConaughey, and they have three children. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. J. Greg Arbaugh.
indeed an honor to be here. Uh, I got a cinder in my eye a little while ago, and it uh, brought some tears. I haven't been around here very much in the last few years, but it's an honor to be inducted into the Hall of Fame here with this illustrious group. Uh, my family, I think, is out there. My partner, uh, I inherited for 59 years a wonderful woman. And my family is here. I appreciate them being here. It's indeed an honor, and I will cherish this for the rest of my life. Thank you very much. <clears throat> the uh, third member of our, of our class tonight is Raymond J. Arbaugh, Arbaugh class of 1920. Raymond graduated from Wellsville High School in 1920, where he started in football, basketball, and track. He was known as Big Six due to his height at the time, which was 6'4", extremely tall for 1920. Ray played football all four years in high school. His most memorable game, memorable game was against East Liverpool in 1919 when he scored three touchdowns as a fullback. His honors included all county, all district. At the time, all state teams were not in existence. They did not become, there were no all state teams till the 30s. Ray captained the, and led her in, in, ba in basketball and he was the leading scorer for three years. <clears throat> in track, R Ray played all four years, and in 1917, he placed second at the county meet in the javelin, javelin throw. In 1918 and 19, he placed first in the javelin and the hammer throw. Ray was a star of the 1919 county track meet. Ray was truly an outstanding athlete at WHF, WHS. After high school, he attended Ohio University. He was married to Edma Pilmer. They had two ch children, Greg and Delight. Ray retired from Patterson Foundry, where he worked as an accountant before his death in 1976. It's a great honor that I present R R Ray Aubaugh. I do, have, I do have one other interesting note. This is the first father-son to go into the Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm not six foot four, uh, but he was my father. He was an extremely good man, uh, good athlete. He once told me uh, when I said I'd like to try and play football, he said, you're too small. Uh, I said, well, I'm never going to be six foot four, but I can really run fast. <laughs> and uh, I, I wasn't so fast as I was scared. Uh, <laughs> it's a big honor for my father. I'm extremely pleased to represent him here tonight. Thank you. Our next inductee will be presented by his brother Steve Baldwin. Of course, we're talking about Dan Baldwin. Steve? Thanks, sir. <clears throat> First of all, my family would like to thank the selection committee for its thoughtfulness. And I do have a comment about uh, Dolly when she called. Uh, she mentioned, she was talking so fast, she was talking about uh, uh, an inductee into the Athletic Hall of Fame, and I thought she was talking about me. And, uh, and then I realized that she was talking about my brother, and I was decent, but my brother was a lot better. So uh, I, I had to correct Dolly on that. Uh, I had a long version uh, of a speech, but I condensed everything into a three by five because they told me I only had about three minutes. So. Uh, you have a nice brochure here. It talks about my brother graduating in 1959. Uh, he scored uh, 1,155 points in a three-year career. Uh, broke Bevo Francis' uh, his record, as a matter of fact. I was talking to Bevo a little bit earlier tonight. But Bevo, I want you to know that uh, I always told my brother that you did yours in a year and a half, and 
and he, it took him three years to break the record, so I never let him forget that. Uh, he also scored 48 points in one game, which was quite an achievement. Uh, Dan may have been one of the best pure shooters, and being an old basketball coach, I know these things. He was one of the best pure shooters, I think, that ever came out of uh, the state of Ohio. Uh, he was uh, first team all uh, Eastern Ohio selection. He was honorable mention all state, but he was also uh, a great runner. Uh, he held the 880 record uh, in uh, this school for, I think it was 20, 30 years before somebody finally broke his record. So uh, he was uh, uh, really quite an athlete. Uh, after high school, he played at, the, uh, at Kent State and uh, also the University of Steubenville. And after graduating from Steubenville College, uh, he went to West Virginia to get his master's degree. And when he graduated from West Virginia, uh, he, he was trying to figure out what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. And he, he wanted to work with underprivileged kids, and, but he also wanted to make some money at teaching. So he read a newspaper article, and it said that that newspaper article uh, had the highest paid teachers are in Detroit. So he got in his car after he graduated from West Virginia, and he drove to Detroit. Now, a lot of you may remember the 60s and the 70s like I do. When he drove over the hill and looked at Detroit, the city was in flames. And he, his comment on that, being the kind of person he was, is there ought to be some jobs here. So, and he didn't have a fi uh, trouble getting one. Uh, he went on uh, in Detroit. He got his, uh, his doctorate at Wayne State University. And he taught for many years. And uh, at, at his death, he was assistant superintendent of schools in the Northeastern District. So he had, he had quite a career, and he, he maintained his time in coaching and what have you. Uh, I saw a couple of other uh, inductees here tonight, and it reminded me of a story about my brother. Uh, some of you may remember I, I coached a Beaver local uh, basketball team for a number of years, and we were getting ready to play uh, East Palestine, who had a really good team. They were state ranked. And uh, my brothers, uh, Phil or Butch, and my brother Dan, they were both home, and they wanted to see my team play against East Palestine. But also, uh, Robert Kiggins, who is an inductee over here, he, um, he was home, and also Rick Gray, uh, they were home, and they decided that they were gonna come up and we were gonna play a little bit at the old MA in East Liverpool. And uh, so my team got done practicing, and they couldn't wait for us to get off the floor so that they could shoot. Well, it was Kent State University Extension. It was their floor. But the coach Eustad, he walked over and he asked me, he said, hey, uh, you guys are shooting around. Would you like to scrimmage us? And my brother Dan naturally said, well, yeah, we'll scrimmage you. He'd scrimmage anybody. And so we started to, to scrimmage. And it was, uh, Bob, get on the boards. Steve, play some defense. Gray, do something, you know. So we scrimmaged. and. He kept saying to me, Steve, play some defense. Steve, play some defense. And I finally looked at him. I said, Dan, how about you playing some defense? And he looked at me and he says, defense? That's rest between offenses. <laughs> but the rest of the story is, is that uh, we proceeded to, uh, after a couple of quarters of playing against us, uh, the coach from uh, Kent State decided to call it off because we were hurting him pretty good. So they called off the rest of the scrimmage. Um, I guess the, the last thing I want to say is uh, my brother loved Wellsville. He loved this reunion that they have every five years. And we teased him about being the man from GLAD and Detroit Dan and, and all those kind of things. But he loved Wellsville, and I wish he was here to accept this himself. And thank you. Our next inductee, Mr. William Connell, his presenter, Charles Peters. Thank you. When uh, Bill Connell called me and asked me to do this tonight, he said, we want you because you're a member of the family, you're a graduate of Wellsville High School, and you're an old jock. 
Now, there's not an old man anywhere that doesn't like to be called an old jock. He really, really hooked me on that. And it made me flash back to the last game I ever played in for Wellsville against East Liverpool. Football, it was 6-6. Six, 6-6. Six. Six, six. It doesn't get any better than that against Liverpool. Of course, in the next half, they laid 20 points on us, but the 6-6 the six, six was good. If you haven't read Bill Connell's bio in the program, please do. And read about the 16 other people. They're very, very inspiring. They brought a lot of credit to themselves, a lot of credit to, to Wellsville. What I want to talk about is Bill Connell is a member of the greatest generation. He played all of his sports in the Great Depression of the 30s. And when he finally got a chance to go to Ohio State, as it said in the paper, he returned shortly thereafter because of obligations, family obligations. What those obligations were, I don't know. But here in the valley, in the 30s, one guy in every five did not have a job. And so that ended Bill's athletic career, and it ended his college career. But what he didn't know, what he didn't know then, was he was going to be a member of what Mr. Brokar has called the greatest generation. He joined the Buckeye Division, Ohio 37th in January of 1941. That was six, that was a year, a year before Pearl Harbor. I don't know why he joined. Maybe he wanted uh, to go to war with other guys from Liverpool and Wellsville and Toronto and Columbiana County. But all those guys went over to the South Pacific together and they fought all the way through to Manila in the Philippines. And in the process, as it says in the program, he won the Bronze Star. He won the Bronze Star, and he was mentioned for evacuating a dead comrade under fire. Winning a Bronze Star is a lot tougher, a lot tougher than winning a varsity letter. He was a hero then. He was a hero on the field. But when he came home, when he came home after the war, he demonstrated even greater courage. On May 10th, 1947, an orange Scotch-Irish guy named Bill Connell married a green Irish Colleen named Katie Sullivan. A mixed marriage took real guts back then, but that wasn't Bill's real challenge. The test of his intestinal fortitude came not into entering the mixed marriage with a Protestant groom and a Catholic bride. That wasn't the real test. The real test came because Katie was from East Liverpool. <laughs> even so, even so, they overcame their differences, and they produced three great children. Lynn Connell of Mendocino, California, a nun, I'm sorry, a nurse and a retired captain in the Air Force. Mark Connell, back here, a jock in his own right, and Father Bill Connell of St. St. Fa Holy Family Parish, in Portland, Ohio. Bill Sr., and I knew him, died much too young on November 10th, 1972. But he'll be remembered now for not only his athletic feats, but because he created a great family of Bill and Mark and, his, and their sister. Thank you for the time and the opportunity to talk about a great athlete from Wellsville and a charter member of the greatest generation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chuck. On behalf of uh, the Connell family, uh, and especially the many uh, members of the family present here this evening uh, and those who are here in spirit. Uh, Mark and I are uh, thanking you all for honoring our father, the class of 1936, and your second enrollment here in the Sports Hall of Fame in Wellsville. Uh, Mark and my sister Lynn and I are especially grateful uh, for this unexpected and uh, surprising uh, recognition of a Tiger athlete on the football field and the basketball court. 
Uh, I did not inherit my father's athletic prowess at all. Uh, that's Mark and Lynn did that. Uh, but we all inherited my father's humility and his sense of gratitude. So we thank you very much for this honor. Thank you, Roswell. <clears throat> Our next inductee is Ed Ryan, he, arguably the toughest 130-pound football center Wellsville ever produced. He will be presented by Tom Woods. Uh, Ed couldn't be here tonight, and uh, he asked me to represent him. He raised, he's raised me for over 60 years, so I know a lot about him. <clears throat> um, it says in here about it, in the program about him being a small center, and he, he was telling me that when the uh, 39 season started, he was number three. In the first game, the first string center got hurt. He was done uh, with a broken collarbone. In the second game, the, s the second string center got hurt. He said uh, the next day on Saturdays, Coach Stewart had guys down there trying to make centers out of him. So uh, <coughs> on Tuesday, he came to him and he says, you're going to start, Ryan. He says, but I need to put down your weight in the program. How big are you? And he says, 130. He says, we can't do that. He said, they'll think I got you out of grade school. <laughs> so he, uh, he says, we're going to put you down at 155, but I want you to play like you're 180. So Eddie, Eddie said, three, three games later, coach said, uh, what, do you weigh today? what do you weigh now, Ed? And he said, 180. Coach says, that's right. <laughs> it also says that his most memorable game against East Liverpool, he recovered a fumble in the end zone. But um, according to Eddie, he was way ahead of the Oakland Raiders because that fumble happened on the 10-yard line, and he kicked it in the end zone before he recovered it. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, there's not a Thanksgiving that doesn't go by that we, we don't hear about the cold weather and the, and the play in East Liverpool <coughs> and the, the terrific crowds that used to come to the games. Um, he, he's, he was very uh, pleased to, uh, to, to re be offered such an outstanding award and his... Uh, wishes for me to tell you was that he uh, he appreciates it but he was only playing a game that he loved to play our next inductee Daryl Shanks class of 53 Definitely one of our best 440 men that Wells will ever. He will be presented by Steve Creator. Actually, we have uh, you got a mayor here. We got an ex-mayor, Nunzio Salvatore Lumberdozzi, going to be presenting Mr. Daryl Shanks. changes in programs. Thank you very much. Um, when they, John Henry called me several weeks ago, they were trying to find someone that played with Darrow either in basketball or track. He was great in both of them. I'm kind of glad they picked me to be able to present him in basketball. I'm very honored to do that, Darrell. So with that, I will get where you moved to now. He's on this side. Yeah, he's moving around on this stage. I couldn't find him earlier. But anyhow, first of all, I know that uh, Playing with Daryl was a real thrill because most of the time I was scrimmage bait with Bebo and Daryl. And when I played, I was the second team, of course. But we're the ones that made them be good. We worked them very hard. Right, Bebo? I was the scrimmage bait, and I enjoyed that very much. And I'm glad Bebo went on to such tremendous greatness. And today we're going to honor Daryl for the greatness that he has presented with Wellsville. We all realize Daryl graduated from Wellsville in 1953. He lettered three years in basketball and track. 
Played one year with the great Bevo Francis in his senior year. Darrell made honorable mention All-State and team in basketball. His career point total was 458. In track, Darrell held the school record for the 440-yard dash with a time of 50.1. During his senior year, he qualified in four events to go to the state meet, including long jump, 440-yard dash, 880-yard relay, and a one-mile relay. He was a member of our first district track championship team. After high school, Darrell went on to Muskingum College. He graduated in 59 with a BS degree in economics and business. While at Muskingum, he led his track team in scoring there also. He went undefeated for two seasons. He was elected in the Muskingum Hall of Fame in 1985. Darrell still holds records there in the quarter mile and the broad jump. A couple other records he had have been broken since, but those are still standing. Between 53 and 59, when Darrell graduated, he served three years in the Army Security Agents, beginning in 1955. After graduation, he joined Equitable Life Assurance Society, where he served in many jobs, including sales, management, and officer. In 1995, he joined a financial planning group, where he is still working today. Darrell married Lois Roach in 1959. They have three children, David, Laura, Todd, and five grandchildren. And also, I see a lot of Daryl's family out there. I'm glad to see all of them here, too. With no further ado, I present to you, very proudly and very honorably, Mr. Daryl Shanks. Darryl. Well, I appreciate it. I don't know that I deserve it. Because all I did was have fun. <laughs> and I had the privilege. <laughs> I had the privilege of playing with Nunzi and with Bebo and with a lot of other good people. I had a long speech prepared but I totally forgot it when I saw my friend Johnny Martin's suit. <laughs> so. <laughs> so that's all, I appreciate it. You're a tough act to follow. You know that, Josh. Yeah? You just ruined it for all of us. You, you, <laughs> look at, you got him crying now. Look. At <laughs> okay, we've done the senior era, and certainly they're not seniors. They're 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 great people. So how about a well-rounded round of applause for the senior? Era? Now we go to the inductees of the modern era. First, presenting David Bo Carter is Justin Carter. How do you follow that? Um, I'm going to make this brief. Uh, I just I got a call a few months ago saying that uh, somebody wanted me to say a speech about him. So I figured uh, I can, you know, tell some funny stories. but. Uh, He's one of the toughest competitors I've ever been around. And now that he's cooking, he's a tough competitor in the kitchen. <laughs> and um, I just want to say thanks for letting me come up here and induct you into the Hall of Fame, man. So to my cousin, my blood, my best friend, David Bo Carter. Uh, first and foremost, my name is Bo Carter. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> as you guys all know, I have a pretty big family, so uh, for me to be the one to be inducted out of my family, uh, it is truly an honor, and I'm greatly blessed. But I had great role models coming up, it's my cousin John, my cousin Troy, and really, that's who really pushed me to excel and to be what I am when it comes to athletics. And playing beside my cousin Justin and cousin Sean in the state finals, I mean, that's a memory that I'll never forget. So uh, 
once again, thank you very much. Our next inductee, uh, a little personal note here, I graduated with her father in 1966, and I think he probably made her what she is. But anyways, Amanda Davidson and her presenter, Mr. Bruce Fike. Hi, a lot, a lot of people out there. I'm here to present Amanda Davidson to 2005 Wellsville Hall of Fame. Wife and I were honored to have a girl like Amanda to coach. Amanda had a great desire to accomplish whatever she wanted with the help and encouragement of her mother and father. She, just, she was a leader of our track team, encouraged in helping our team members. In four events, we won the four county championships, four a OVAC championships, four district championships, and three, re three regional runners up. And third place, eighth place, fifth place, and third place in Division Three state track and field championships. Amanda went, went to state 14 out of 16 times in long jump, 100 hurdles, 300 meter hur low hurdles, and 4 one her relay, going to the podium nine times in the state meet. In 1996, she won the state gold medal in the 100-meter hurdles. She holds the school record in the 100-meter hurdles, 14.9 seconds, and the 4 one her relay, 50.1. She was voted by the Greater Youngstown track officials, top senior track and field performer in Columbia County. Division three female track athlete in the year in 94 and 96, presented by the Eastern District Track and Con Cross Country Coaches Association. Amanda continued her academic and athletic career at well we whew, Wheeling Jesuit University in Wheeling, West Virginia, where she earned a Bachelor of Art degree in Psychology and a Master of Science degree in Physical Therapy. During the NCAA Division II collegiate career, she qualified for national championships on two occasions, both in the high hurdles. In, two ha in 2000, she became Wheeling Jesuit's first female athlete to place in the indoor national competition, earning All-American status. She also qualified for the NCAA Division II outdoor champ championship. Amanda earned academic All-American status for both indoor and outdoor national competitions. Amanda has, has been employed as a staff physical therapist at the Cedar Bowl City Hospital. She began coaching track at Beaver Local in 2005 season. There were three women, only three women, from Wellsville High School who won gold medals at the state meet. Amanda was one of these. I present Amanda Davidson. It's an honor and a privilege to receive an award like this from Wellsville. So thank you. Our next inductee, Greg Ketchum, class of 1974. Uh, on a little personal note, I'd like to thank Greg for taking it easy on me uh, in football practice for several years while I played on the bait team. He will, he will be presented by ha our coach, Howard Gilger. I'm glad Bruce came up uh, where the rails are. I didn't want to be the first one. <laughs> I, I would like to uh, quickly congratulate the inductees, all of them, 
It's a great honor to be selected in your own hometown, particularly when many people on the, on the selection committee knew you when you weren't quite as suave and debonair and sophisticated as you are tonight. Some of these people I had the privilege of coaching in high school. Some of them I got to watch many of their athletic successes. Some of them uh, participated before I came to Wellsville. But I do remember as a very young kid reading in the Wheeling paper about John Henry's exploits. <laughs> My purpose is to introduce Greg Ketchum. Greg was a great lineman for the Tigers back in the 70s. He was one of those guys who was big and strong. He was quick, he was tough, and he was smart. And <clears throat> his honors included being a first team selection on the Ohio team after the 73 season. And he made all the other local all-star groups, such as the uh, county and the district and the area and downriver, the OVAC and the Ohio Valley all-star team that year. He was highly recruited. Uh, we saw some schools or heard from some schools after Greg's senior year that don't always make stops in the Ohio Valley. Particularly, uh, we, I think we heard from most of the Ivy Leaguers. They're looking for players that can get into school. And I know one guy from Cornell, the coach called me, I think every other night for a month, between 10 and 11 at night, and I finally told him, I said, you need to talk to Greg more than me. I said, I couldn't play for you, and I probably couldn't even get in. <laughs> but Greg ended up accepting a football scholarship to Bowling Green State University, <clears throat> where he lettered as a freshman and a sophomore. And uh, an injury during his sophomore season cut short his football career. But he continued on to earn his degree in accounting. And from there, he had a very great career so far in the business world. He was an, a, an accountant with uh, Republican LTV Steel. And then he went to work for Kellogg, where he's held various numerous positions over the years. And he's still there. Uh, Greg is married to the former Gina Mayhair. If you don't remember, that's one of Dr. Phil's daughters. He is, uh, has a family with three children. They live in Battle Creek, Michigan. I think he said he, he's moved there, what, three times? He goes there and gets assignments in other cities, and he ends up back in Battle Creek. And uh, at the present time, he's vice president of Customer Relations and Logistics Services with Kellogg USA. It is a great pleasure for me to present from the class of 1974, Mr. Greg Ketchum. Thank you. Can we get a round of applause for one of the greatest uh, coaches in Wellesley's history? Actually, I'm here as an auctioneer to take bids on John Henry's suit. Can, can somebody give me a hundred? <laughs> we'll start. <laughs> anyway, it's great to be back in, in Wellsville. Um, i start with a thank you to the committee, um, Jim Brown, Chris McNichol, and, and others. Uh, thank you for taking that, that uh, step and recognizing the proud heritage of Wellsville and the uh, string of, of great a athletes. Um, I'm humbled to be part of, of this class, a uh, distinguished group up here. Um, I know there's a lot of other deserving people out there, and I'm sure uh, they will get their due in the, in the upcoming years. But it's always great. Uh, I've been away from Wellsville for many years now, and it's great to come back. Uh, what a city. Uh, I think the thing that sticks with me the most, uh, I have a wonderful family in Wellsville, but just the, the whole family and the culture of Wellsville. 
uh, it's such a, a fun place to be. Uh, the heritage, the rich heritage of athletes, just year after year, it reloads. And I think a lot of that goes to the community. Um, they make it right. Uh, you know, they make you proud to, to play for such a fine school. Uh, there's so many other people in the community that do the things behind the scenes. And I hope the, the Hall of Fame committee will at uh, some time recognize some of the people like the, the Fuscos, uh, the Wellsville Wayne Elliotts, um, you know, some of the people that behind the scenes have done so much for the city. But uh, again, I'm humbled to be a part of the Hall of Fame, and it's great to be back. Uh, and it's always fun to, to live in Michigan and be a, a Buckeye uh, during a a high state Michigan week. I always wear my high state shirt. I, I have the uh, um, the uh, occasion to, to go to Michigan State to speak at a couple classes, and I always wear a high state shirt. And uh, so I take a lot of abuse, but a lot of pride to, to say I'm a, a Wellsville alumni. Thank you. Now, somebody has to straighten me out here. This is supposed to be a presentation of the modern era. And I remember the next guy that's going to come up here played basketball. And a lot of you younger people probably don't remember this. Remember the clock hand that used to go around? And when you got to the last minute, it was red. I'd like to know how that's in the senior, because the true story is, you know the old story about my mother used to, dressed me up in a little sailor suit to watch this guy play. Well, that really happened. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Kiggins, introduced by Mr. Rick Gray. You know, so far all the talk has been about John Henry's suit. Has anybody seen John Michael lately? <laughs> With this hat that he has on, it's, uh, it's incredible. Steve, that wasn't fair. <laughs> you know, Robert made it in by one year. This, this was his last year to be in the modern era. So uh, I think that's pretty good. But what a privilege and honor uh, I have to present to you the next member of the Wellsville Athletic Hall of Fame, class of 2005 my old friend of more than 55 years, Robert Kiggins. His accomplishments are listed, of course, in the program and his various awards and all-star teams and so on. There's other things I want to talk about. Robert could easily have been nominated for this honor for his accomplishments in football alone. In his junior year, he set the school record for touchdown passes in one game with five and that record stands today. He switched positions for his senior year and still was instrumental in leading his team to a 7-2-1 record. Robert could easily have been nominated for this honor for his accomplishments in basketball alone. At the completion of his career, he stood second in total points scored, and I think he is still fourth on that list. He led his team to a sectional championship in the Division I class, the first since the mid-50s, and the last until the schools were divided into three divisions early in the 70s. Robert could easily have been nominated for this honor for his accomplishments in track alone. Along with victories in the high jump at the county level, he was county champion, I think, two years, he twice qualified for the state of Ohio track meet, again in the big school division. Those are the cold, hard, tangible facts, and more of those are in the program. But as you all know, in sports, there are intangibles. And what may not have been known to spectators and general public, but was very well known to his coaches and teammates, was that Robert was a born leader and a driving force behind all of his teams. As proof of that, just know that he was elected captain of his basketball team at Division I, the Citadel, where he received a four-year basketball scholarship. Now, I may be a little biased 
But I think Robert's career in three sports matches up pretty well with anyone who ever was an athlete here at Wellsville. Anyway, it is with great pleasure that I present to you as inductee to the Wellsville Athletic Hall of Fame, one of the greatest all-around athletes ever to grace the various athletic venues of Wellsville High School, Robert G. Kiggins. Thank you, Rick. Uh, thanks for keeping me out of that senior division uh, so I can be younger than John Henry. I want to recognize my wife, Penny's here, and, and my two daughters, two of the three, Amy and Kelly, and my brother, John, and his family. My brother, John, told me to get up, take my award, and leave. <laughs> but whoever listens to their brother, really, I want to say, Three quick points. I'm honored and humbled to receive this award. I'm very proud of it. The second point I want to make, and it's probably for the younger kids here, and I've seen some here, is what do you think are the, one of the single traits that makes the 17 people here in the Hall of Fame? I think it's hard work. Hard work. Everyday hard work. And, uh, you know, just, just like waking up early in the morning to shovel off the basketball courts. Rick Gray knows something about that. Practicing pass moves in the street. Pat Aboniso knows something about that. He caught two of those five passes. Uh, so the, the thing for the younger folks, hard work. And then the last thing I want to say is that I'm very proud to have grown up in Wellsville, Ohio, and uh, I hope someday that I might be able to do something important to help the town in the future. And thank you very much. <clears throat> Our next indu inductee, a 1994 graduate of Wellsville High School, Leonard Kenzel, will be presented by his father, Mike Kenzel, and Mike Smith. I just want to say, first of all, uh, I transferred to Wells when my senior year, never stepped foot in this town too much until my senior year. I uh, was great friends with Leonard and um, a couple other fellows that wrestled on the wrestling team. And my high school coach left, and uh, these guys convinced me that I should be a Wellsvillian. So I, had, I, I left good old Stanton, and I left the hills and came to Wellsville. <clears throat> and everybody here opened me with, opened me with great open arms. And uh, just, Wells was a great place, and has a special place in my heart. And uh, there's no other town like it, I'm definitely convinced. I still have uh, lots of great, great, great friends that I met here in just that, that quick nine months that I was here. And uh, I just think it says a lot for the town that um, I never had one problem the whole time that I was here. Um, Leonard's mom, Carrie, and Ron let me in their house and opened me with open arms. And, you know, I slept at their house more than I slept at my own house. And... Um, it was a hard thing to transfer, you know, coming in just my senior year and uh, meet some tough guys like Andy Martin and Brian Wolf and uh, Brian McIntosh and all those good boys. And uh, they just, again, opened me with open arms. And I just think that says a lot about Wellsville. So it's a, Wellsville has a very special place in my heart. And it's, I say it's a great town. So next, I want to talk a little bit about Leonard. Uh, Leonard was, uh, again, a, a great friend of mine for a long time. Uh, Anybody that was ever a wrestler knows that wrestling is like a fraternity, and uh, th they stay closely knitted. And Leonard, Leonard wasn't uh, the best of wrestlers whenever he was uh, in junior high, and he wasn't the best of wrestlers when he was a freshman, but he, he had a strong will and desire to become a good wrestler, just like his dad, who was a four-time state qualifier. And uh, Leonard just kept working hard and working hard and putting in uh, just like the last fellow talked about, just hard work. I know two summers in a row, Leonard, all Leonard did was just travel and wrestle while everybody else, else was out hitting graduation parties and uh, just having a good time. Um, 
I know Leonard knows that I'm not going to get up here without bringing it up, but me and Leonard had the great pri privilege of wrestling each other when he was a junior, when he was a sophomore and I was a junior at the Big Edison North Invitational. And I, I told him one of the best top ten things that's ever happened to me in my life was beating him. <laughs> so now he's a state champ, so it kind of makes me a state champ, I think. But um, Leonard got to where he was by tons of hard work and um, just good people here in Wellsville pushing him. And uh, again, uh, I, I love Wellsville. It's, it's a great, great city. And um, you know, I, I now have a carpet business in Steubenville. And just anytime anybody walks into my carpet store and they mention Wellsville, they just automatically get the deal. So <laughs> take that how you want it. <laughs> so so um, again, I would like to. I know it's great to have Mike back here in the great town of Wellsville, <clears throat> and I know Mike loves this town. I know all you guys out there have probably seen Mike running past your house uh, a time or two, so it gives me great pri privilege to introduce Wellsville's first and only state wrestling champion, Leonard Kinzel. Um, first, I'd like to to, to comment. Uh, I'd like to, to 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 make sure that everyone knows that I can't make the 125 pound weight class anymore. <laughs> so you know, I, I've been reminded of that quite a few times this week. Um, but it's great to be back. There's a lot of people in the room that um, supported the Wellsville wrestling program throughout the years, um, one way or another. You had a family member wrestle or any kind of support that you gave. Um, it's a tough town. Um, we had a great team there in 93. We had a chance to win the state as a, as a team. Um, a lot of individuals, like he said, I, I'm not the most naturally talented athlete, so there's a lot of people that, that helped out um, through the years um, building and, and, you know, and to what I became. So thank you. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Over uh, probably the last 35 years being a teacher here in Wellsville, being with the boys program for a number of years. Over uh, probably the last 35 years being a teacher here in Wellsville, being with the boys program for a number of years, over 20 years uh, coaching here all together, to move over with the girls and then have a caliber of an athlete like a Tony Paps to play for you. Believe me, I was with the boys, so, well, the, the one team we ended up going to the Final Four and, uh, 1983-84. Just a great team of boys. You get with the girls and you take a look at Tony and I can remember uh, like uh, Mike Kinzel would run around town. He actually ran. I tried to jog. And I can remember going down past Tony's house when she went to St. Al's as a fourth and fifth grader. Just a little girl. Out there with a the hoop every day basketball, hoop, just playing by herself or who anyone, anybody that she could play with. And as she moved up through the ranks through St. Al's, I knew uh, I had a chance to get the head job and by her uh, eighth grade year I watched her play basketball at St. Al's and at the YMCA. I watched her come into Wellsville as a freshman and start at a point guard position. I mean that if you really don't understand basketball. It all starts with your point. They have to understand the game. And Tony, as a, just a freshman, had a very, very unbelievable knowledge of the game. And you talk about hard work, I can remember, and I've noticed uh, a few times uh, people coming up, and, and East Liverpool keeps coming up. Uh, I mean, what a rivalry. And uh, I'll never forget, we started off the year either her junior or senior year. And Liverpool always played a zone, and anybody that knows Wellsville uh, from the time of Bob Dawson on to when, when I was through the program, you didn't play zone. You played man-to-man. -man. And uh, I knew what Liverpool was going to do as a, from a coaching point, and all of a sudden I make an adjustments with our offense, and, and nothing's working. And I, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And this is wh what I mean by having a a coach and a player on the floor, and I'll never forget it, she came back past the bench there and looked at me and said, Coach C, they're playing a box and one. What are we going to do? I told her just go on back out on the floor, and I turned to my assistant at the time, which was Rick Cavett, and I said, I don't have any idea. I've never seen a box and one before. I'm stuck. 
So he looked at me, he says, we got to do something. And I said, yeah, but uh, believe me, don't let the players know it. I don't have any idea at this point. So uh, we kept watching the game. I made adjustments. Nothing worked. We go in at halftime, and, and it was probably about 30 seconds before the end of that second quarter, and I couldn't wait to get that over. I sort of saw a little bit of a weakness in that box. So I had an idea, and we go in at uh, halftime, and we're on our floor, down 14 points to East Liverpool. And uh, one thing I wanted to get off the floor before anything, anybody threw something at me. We get down in the locker room, and I, I just saw one weakness. I explained the weakness. And what it amounted to, uh, and it was through Tony's career, we had to have a team effort, which we always got that a lot of the other players knew Tony was the scorer. Well, we went back out on the floor with the idea that everybody else had to get a part of it, and I sort of lucked out. Uh, they played the box and one, worried about her, and our two uh, block people at that point started to score points. At that point, our press took over, and if I'm not mistaken, we ended up, we were very, very fortunate, we ended up winning by 14 or 15 points that particular game. But her ability to be out on the floor, she recognized it, uh, I know, before I did. I'll never forget that. And then taking, uh, and we've talked about hard work. Uh, Tony was just unbelievable at hard work. When we would have open gyms in the summer, she was there because she brought the rest of the girls in. They left the gym, they went to 17th Street, 18th Street, and played. They played a lot of times with the boys. A lot of hard work. Uh, I think it was her junior year that we're playing Steubenville Central, and, and anybody that has, in any sport, ever played Steubenville Central, you would know you're in for a battle. It could be basketball. It looked like wrestling at time on the floor. But she ended up having an injury to her knee, hobbled over to the bench, in and out a few times. We'd ice it. She'd go back in. Luckily enough, we won it. Uh, shortly after that, we played uh, Edison, which is uh, a lot bigger school than we are. And to show her ability to get everybody involved in the game, it was an unbelievable game. She was late even getting there because she had a doctor's appointment. Told me, you know, she's going to have to have it operated on, but she's allowed to play. Just don't get hurt. So we're out on the floor and uh, make a long story short right there. What she ended up doing, whoever rebounded the ball made sure Tony got it. And then everybody else ran as fast as they could down the floor. And uh, the other four girls that were, you know, on a team would take off running. She'd pass them the ball. Uh, at halftime, we were up 35 to 12. What do you say to a team when you're up 35 to 12 to your, one of your arch rifles? So I had to complain on the girls that let the 12 points happen from Edison. And that was, that was my speech right there. How could you do that? It was one of those nights that she just came loaded for bear. She couldn't shoot it. She had a hard time getting up and down the floor. But she made sure the rest of the people got involved. And probably looking back at the Steubenville Big Red, and if you noticed, uh, Wellsville right now, unfortunately, we're very, very small. We don't play you know, like Big Red anymore. Uh, what a tremendous rival. But they had a, a, a very good team that year. Tony was hurt. We went to Big Red. We got beat right at the very end. They had a player by the uh, name of Tawana Bennett that outstanding player. I don't feel as good as Tony, but she was a, a heck of a player. We came in uh, on a Saturday game in the afternoon, and, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, the gym's, gym was packed. She came to play. She ended up, and uh, we didn't even know it, in the locker room, she scored 47 points that afternoon. And what people probably don't realize, she sat on the bench for six minutes in foul trouble. She had seven threes that night, which just shows you that uh, her ability, her drive to get whatever it took out of herself and the rest of her teammates, she was willing to do it. I'm not going to go over the program uh, because it's there for you to read. I know Bill Miller and myself both, when we say in there, what a tremendous person, athlete, to coach, 
It was just unbelievable. I feel, I'll feel. tell you what, she made me look good many times. Uh, we decided one time, um, I think it was her senior year, we were playing Buckeye South. And all of a sudden, nothing that we did went in the hoop. We finally got the lead at the end of the, or the starting of the third quarter. We're up by two points, and I pulled the ball out, and we decided to hold it. Well, Buckeye South on their floor decided to go ahead and just stay back in the zone. And that's when I brought her over. She stood there and held the ball. And I'll never forget the referee looking at me and saying, man, you're going to get me in trouble. You've got to play basketball. I said, well, things aren't going to go in, so we're just going to wait it out. So about 30 seconds left in the third quarter, I tell her, just take it to the hoop. We set up an offense, or we had an offense set up. She dished the ball to uh, Jill Wagner at that time. Now we're up four. Came out the fourth quarter, and we were lucky enough to have the ball. Started that all over again. And then they came out and finally played basketball. But it was her ability to create on the floor. It was just unbelievable to watch this girl play. And I could, st I could stand up here, and uh, as you notice, I don't have anything to, to read. I was able to live it. And I'll tell you what. What an honor. The class of 1995 had a lot of good athletes in it. And besides athletes, <coughs> they were good kids. Never had a problem with them. And I'm just very, very proud to stand here in front of you and present to you. And I'll tell you what, she's very quiet. You never really heard her complain about anything. But I'm very, very proud to present to you, class of 1995, Tony Pappas. like to thank the committee for choosing me. This is a very big honor. Thank you very much. Our next inductee will be presented by a state champion high jumper from Wellsville, Mr. Greg Pulley, to introduce Pam Pulley. I'm not going to be up here too long because uh, I can see some of you getting restless out there a little bit. <laughs> Wanted to talk about my sister uh, from the class of 1983, Pam Pulley. Uh, she was the daughter to Don and Betty Pulley and also three brothers, myself, Donald, and Steve. I'd like to go with Mr. Kiggins said whose record I took over after all the years, all right? <laughs> but I'd like to go with what he said was the hard work. Growing up with three brothers, you learn to get tough. I remember on the back porch scrapping with my oldest brother and seeing tears in her eye, but also seeing tears in here. So she knew how to get tough and hang with us. Um, playing down 18th Street, I did hear that mentioned already. And once again, like Tony, she played with Mike Wright and all of us that got in there. We always played against the older ones to make ourselves better. My sister was one of them that was right in the middle of it. Came home beat up sometimes, came home from running into the pole down at 18th Street, but she kept going. She kept proceeding on. <laughs> so I'm going to read a little, and if you want to look through your book, that Pam graduated in 1983 from Wells High School. During her years in high school, she was all-around athlete in basketball, volleyball, and in track. Um, she played volleyball for two years and won honors as All-Area 82-83, All-OVAC 82-83, All-District 83, Team MVP in 83, Most Kills in 83, Most Points, Scored 83, and Co-Captain 82 and 83. During her basketball years, which w some of her toughest years, you missed a treat if you didn't get to see her play. Many heroics, many steal the ball, just pass half court shots and win games. And it goes again with hard work. Yeah, she was um, voted team captain 83, all area 80, 81, 82, 83, all OVAC 82, 83, 
all district 82 83 and all state 82 and 83 she was the team MVP she scored the most points she earned best defense 82 83 Pam also was our first female athlete to score a thousand points and our first female recruit to go to a division one school which was Ohio University and she earned her degree there and I got to go there and it was a good time. <laughs> Ohio U is a party school. <laughs> in track, Pam selected, all, she was selected all air 82, 83, and all OVAC 81 and 82, and she was a state qualifier in the four by one 81 uh, relay team, voted team captain. And in high school, she was a four year letter winner for basketball track and three year letter winner for volleyball. Says that Pam resides in Atlanta, Georgia, but being my sister, I know she's from Byron, Georgia, which is a couple hours away. And she is currently working with Bell South. Got me a little jealous because I'm working a steel mill around here and we think that's good money. Still makes more than me. But I, I'd like to present a person that I love dearly and just want to tell her I'm proud of your accomplishments, Pam. Pam Pulley, 1983. I just want to thank God, first of all, for this city, for this place. I think it's one of the, one of the greatest cities in, a, in, the, in America. This is a, one of the greatest places to grow up. And uh, I mimic what he says because, um, I don't know if it was you, no, it was on this side. He said it, Mr. Shank, right? Did I get it right? He said we had fun. I had fun on the court. I don't know about anybody else. It was hard, but we had fun. I thank God for the coaches that we had, Mr. Young. Uh, Mr. Carter, I can't remember them all, Mrs. Dash, she was a great volleyball coach. She used to tell us, take the paint off the floor when we spike, you know, kill them. It, we had so much fun. Um, I am very, very honored to be here today. I am so proud uh, to represent this school. Um, I had so much, I just, you know what, I want to give honor to God, but also to my mother, because she was one of the most encouraging, the most supportive she was a Christian lady, and she thought that um, having fun was all right. But when she would, she would get us from the court, I'm telling you, we'd be out playing. Lights would come on. She'd start calling our name, Greg, Pam, Donnie, Steve. Right now, we'd have to come in. We'd be so mad. But she is somebody who will be there. She's my friend. And when we would fall and scrape our knees or we didn't get the game, didn't go right, she would be right there hugging us, crying with us sometimes. But she's a great lady, and I am so thankful for that. I'm also thankful for the Pulley family because I had uncles that taught us how to play. They taught us to be very, very competitive, but to remember to be nice to the other guys. You might, uh, you know, have to go down the street and say uh, you need a pop or a Coke or a dime or something from somebody else. So make sure you treat people right. But they taught us ab about the games, basketball, volleyball. Uh, my uncles are very, very competitive. They thought they could beat the kids, so we had to show them, you know, how it was done. <laughs> But I am so grateful. Thank you so much for this honor. I'm very proud to be among these elite athletes up here. Thank you so much. Our next inductee is a 1988 graduate, graduate, Ron Pooley. He will be presented by Anthony Winston. Ronnie's flight from Chicago was delayed because of heavy storms in the Chicago area. He landed in Pittsburgh, uh, phoned, he's on his way. We hope he gets here before this program is over.
Uncle Ron is a very special person to me. Over the years, he taught me that if you want something bad enough and work for it, you'll get it. When I was younger, I would look at all the different trophies that he had, and I would think, wow, man, this is what it's all about. Now, aside from being salutatorian of the graduating class of 1988 and receiving countless track and basketball awards, his most significant achievement to date is his marriage to Miss, Mrs. Carrie Brush, who is also an alumni of Wesley High School. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ron Pulley. Ask his mom, Tilly, to come up and accept the award. And, and I would like to ask my grandmother to come up and accept his award. Thank you very much. on behalf of Ron. He just got his, in the car, headed here from Pittsburgh, so he won't be here. Thank you. Our next inductee is a 1974 graduate, um, Mike Wright. Night, excuse me, a 1976 graduate. He looks. Yeah, I, I, I guess, I guess, just 76, not 74. He, he looks about 30 still. Uh, but Mike was an outstanding athlete. I had the opportunity, opportunity to play several sports with him, and just one outstanding competitor. I'll let the, I'll let his good friend, Corny Carter, explain the rest. and they're almost done. Mike Boxwright. Back in the day, they called him Box. My brother Davey sitting back there gave him that name. And he got that name because he, back in the 70s, he had the froze and Box had a nice square one. So Davey aptly named him Box. <laughs> of course, you don't got it now. Uh, back in the day, yeah, my man had it all. He had the looks, athletic ability, bell-bottom pants, and he had a Volkswagen. Remember Volkswagen? <laughs> you like it? Remember? I knew uh, Box was going to be a good one, though. When he was summoned by Coach Bob Dawson off the freshman basketball team, he went straight to the varsity team and became a four-year starter and a Wellsville legend. The name of his game was the short-range jump shot, but he was at, at his best taking the ball to the basket with his patented spin move. He was just as good on defense. He was a great defender on the ball, good helper, a great one-man press, and kids nowadays are cocky, just like my son, and I told my son Zane great things about Mike, and of course he says, Dad, I can school him, but I told him, if you can score on box, you earned it because that's the type of defense he played. On the gridiron, he played for my main man, Howard Gilger, and uh, Box worked just as hard on the gridiron. I can remember Mike dragging me down to the field in late July in the hot to go through his workout schedule. That consisted of running 60-yard sprints, followed by 10 minutes running up and down the bleachers. But that's how dedicated Mike was to all sports. He was, he was a dual QB. He either ran for 100 yards or passed for two or three more. He threw me one or two. Thanks. And he was a true leader of the team. I mean, a true leader. When he spoke, everyone listened. I always thought football would be his ticket. That proved to be right when he went to BG and had great success, and then free agent trout with the Chicago Bears and later played in Canada. And people that know Mike back in the 70s and Creo can vouch because he's seen him, uh, a couple other people. The one thing, and I, and I tell Zane this, the one thing that made him a great ball player was his intensity. It didn't matter checkers, 
tennis, bowling. He wanted to win. He had his game face on. He had, and it, it, of course, I was the one I didn't have my game face on, but when I didn't, my man straightened me out. That's what made Mike a, a real great player. People know that I have two sisters and three brothers, but I actually have two sisters and four brothers. So it is my pleasure to present my fourth brother and newest member of the Wellsville Hall of Fame, Michael Box Wright. It's kind of tough to follow. And I want to thank Quinn very much. And I think he knows and all the other people that uh, I've grew up with over the years, how I feel about them, how I feel about Wellsville. And I want to thank all of the honorees here today. John Henry, thank you. I thought I was doing OK today, but I guess yes. <laughs> second's OK. And I just want to clear one thing up. I wasn't the one that pushed Pam. She may have been out on the court. I may have elbowed her, but I didn't push her. But I think uh, I had a conversation before I came up here, matter of fact, uh, and talking with the reporter. And the reporter asked me about what do you think about uh, Wellsville and your time. And one of the things that comes to my mind and stands out so very dear, dear to my heart, and I think we all need to think about that as we go forth and with our kids growing up. The one thing that's very clear in Wellsville, I saw Mr. Betts out here today, Davy Carter, people like that, Mr. Brown, people in my neighborhood that I grew up with. I live in a house where I'm from, live in Allentown, PA, and I met a gentleman a couple months ago. If you go out of my house and you look two doors to my right, is his house. I know him. I know his name. He knows my wife. My wife walks every morning, 6 o'clock, takes her dog around the block. But he didn't know I lived in that house. And it hurt me that my neighbors didn't know me. But that didn't happen here in Wells. I tell everybody all the time, I'm so proud and so glad I grew up where I grew up to go through, to live the life that I had here, the childhood that I had. You don't get to be up here without support. Support from family, friends, teammates. I had a neighborhood that I grew up in. I had friends. We knew everybody. But that's not how the world, world is today. You may not know who your neighbor is sits right next to you. And I want to thank all of you for that, and thank you for giving me that opportunity. It's something that I hold dear to my heart. Support and support in many different ways. Obviously, you have starts with your family. I think you all know my mom and dad, Mr. and Mrs. Bickerson. <laughs> okay. You know, people tell me all the time to see them going down the street. Bug even told me this morning about it. But uh, my mom and dad, though, were there. They were there for me. They were in my corner, even when I made mistakes. And my family, my sisters, I have two wonderful sisters and a wonderful family. My son is here. My two sons are here with me today. One son is running track for Cincinnati. And I'm so honored to be able to share this with him. And my other son, Jordan, it's just great to know that you have the kind of support that you need from the people that you need and the teammates. When he talked about Davy Carter, I can tell you about what Davy Carter did for me. As a freshman on the varsity basketball team, I couldn't hang around with Quinny and Steve and the rest of my friends, whom you all know. But Davy took me with him, and he protected me. Would take me up to Liverpool to watch basketball games. If things broke out, something happened, he got me out of there. Bug Thompson, Cheryl Jackson. Randy Dillard, I saw him back here. I used to look up and watch Randy play with former honorees from last year, Chris Thornton and Harry Thornton. Those were the first guys that I looked at. But when I was on the court, seventh grade and eighth grade, Bug and Cheryl and Davey pick you up, take you onto the court. And they let you play with them. 
while you were out there, and you got a, a real lesson in the school of hard knocks about playing basketball and growing up, and you couldn't cry when they elbowed you, when they pushed you. You couldn't laugh, and you had to play defense. You couldn't shoot the ball because you were the only little guy out there, but you had to play defense, and if you didn't play defense, they whooped up on you. And then they send you home to mom and dad. And I always remember that, and I'll be thankful for them. Davey and Mark and John Babalik. That class of 76, Quinny and I shared special moments, football and basketball. And we went to the state tournament, the first team to do so. And we told ourselves, but we practiced all year for that. John Babalik took us to Beaver, PA. Mark Moxley took us up to the East End. And we played the people from Midland, Liverpool. Davey taking us places around here. We went and played every day. And the teammates, they knew I was committed to them and I knew they were committed to me. And if you can't have that commitment, you don't need to be out there and playing. But they knew that I was going to give them 110% no matter how sick I may have been or how I felt or where we were. The one thing football teaches you, unlike any other game that you may play, it is a total team sport. You need to have the support of your teammates. But more importantly, things don't get done unless you have those five guys up front. Mike Wright can't be Mike Wright without the Mike the Sorrows of the world. B. Stanley. And I'm just mentioning the seniors that I played with, but there were so many more. I played with Chris. We had a great team our jun his senior year, my junior year. You can't do those things. You can't be the person you want to be unless you have that support of your teammates. And they knew deep down in their hearts that I was committed to be the best with them and I wanted them to be the best. And I carried that tradition that Cheryl Jackson talked to me about and Bud Thompson talked to me about. Wellsville, winning. That's all that mattered. And that's all that I cared about and that's all that I wanted to see was Wellsville victorious. And when I went out on that floor in that uniform, that's what it meant to me, all of you, representing all of you. Yes, I was cocky at times. And there's a lot of different reasons that some of the people in here know why I was the way I was at times, and that intensity. Mr. Yoger, every now and then Mr. Yoger didn't have a whole lot to say, but he would get after me when he needed to. But we had some successful teams. He had a lot of successful teams. We had some great athletes here. There are people that I played against and went up against who may not be up here, who may not make it here. Some great, great athletes that I looked up to and that I honored and I looked up to with awe. And all of the honorees here, Greggy Pooley, following him through his high school career, just how proud I was. And hopefully he knew that I was proud of him and that I cared about how he performed on the floor. My colleague, Quinn, great athlete, football and basketball, may not know about football. Led the Valley in t interceptions as a junior, touchdown receptions as a senior. Mr. Gilger, what'd he tell us? No time left on the clock. Throw me the ball, we'll win the game. Six nothing on the 25 yard line. Mr. Gilger and I are having a conversation about how we're gonna score, we're down. Quinn comes over, throw me the ball, I'm open. He makes the play, it happens. So I just want to thank all of you. I thank you for this honor, past honorees, future honorees. One of the things that sport teaches you is how to deal with adversity. I think that's the most important thing that we need to learn how to deal with because there's going to be some adversity in your life. Things are going to happen. Hard times. But when you get knocked down and you lose a few times, and you lose sometimes. How do you get back up? How do you march on? And that's what I thought I wanted to relay to you tonight that I took from the sports that I played here in Wellsville that put me off on a great path to Bowling Green. Greg, I saw him there my first time out in practice at Bowling Green. This is a great city, a great school, great tradition. A lot of great athletes, past, future, and present. And I want to thank you all for giving me this opportunity and this honor. Uh, 
I am deeply, deeply touched and honored. And for those of you that I've had a chance to spend my time with over the years, I know Steve's is not here tonight, but if he could be here, he would be. Just say a little prayer for his mother right now. She's in the hospital. And I want to echo what Greg said about Wellsville Wayne and others being in the Hall of Fame and think about the loony ladies. Those people backed us. They walked behind us and they supported us come hell or high water, whatever we did. And I want to thank all of them. They made my, my years at Wellsville very, very special. Some of them are not with us today, but I know they're listening. And again, to all of you, thanks for all of the support making this the city it is and the great time that I had growing up here, and I appreciate it. And I have one other thing that I want to show to Steve. You got to help me with this, Steve. This is what it's all about for me. Our next inductee will be presented by her father, Jerome Gitcher. Of course, I'm speaking about Karen Dash. I know it's why the older guys take the steps up, uh, so I suppose for the next one I'll take the elevator. <laughs> uh, I'm here to present the name of my daughter, who I love very much, to the Hall of Fame and to the Hall of Fame committee. Put their picture in the lobby, and I sure I am proud of Karen for what she's accomplished in her tenure as a teacher in one of those schools. Some of Karen's accomplishments are, after graduating from high school in 1964 in Kent State University, Karen returned to her hometown to teach and reestablish the girls program who had been absent for more than 40 years. As she served as head coach in basketball in 1973 and 74, volleyball 1974 through 1987, track through 1974-81. She also served as girls athletic director for five years. Uh, after graduating, uh, Dr. Lowe called her and asked her if she would take over the athletic program, girls athletic program in Wellville High School. And uh, I was a little skeptical about that, <laughs> her being just 20 some years old and just getting out of college and taking a big job like that. But she said she was going to take it and she took it and she did it as you will notice as follows. During her tenure as volleyball coach, her team achieved 12 championships. Her teams were also district champions on two occasions, Ohio Valley athletic champions four times. She was instrumental in establishing the Wellville High School volleyball champions, or the invitational uh, tournament to, for the area, uh, the chosen area volleyball teams. that were all good teams who entered. Karen was named Columbiana County and OVAC Coach of the Year in 1985. Her overall win-loss record as a volleyball coach was 204 wins, 42 losses. I can't understand how they lost those 42 games. <laughs> 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 anyway, although her first love was the game of volleyball, Karen also had a successful t tenure as girls' track coach. She was blessed with many talented athletes, and that is a fact, uh, who made her job coaching easy. Her dual meet record was 30 wins, 14 losses, 
one tie. During the 1980 season, our team had an undefeated dual rec meet record, winning the Stanton Logo Indi Indian League Championship. They were also runner-up in Columbiana County meet and sectional OVAC. Our team continued to enjoy success during the 1981 season, winning Columbiana County meet and sectional meets. Uh, that uh, Columbiana County meet was the greatest thing I've ever seen. Uh, if we took on East Liverpool, we took on Beaver Local, Salem, and these girls, one of them just was presented, the Pulley girl. They were great. We went down to the last race and we won, <laughs> we won the last race and won the title. That was the greatest thing I ever seen. It, it was great, beating the Potters. <laughs> Her team continued success to enjoy success during the 1981 season and uh, winning the Stanton Indian Local League and the OVAC Karen also had three individual and two relay team state meet qualifiers. Karen graduated from Kent State University in 1968 with a Bachelor of Science degree in Health and Physical Education and holds a Master's degree from Dayton University in School Counseling. She was elected as a Martha Holden Jennings scholar, who had nothing to do with the uh, athletics, but so I didn't pay much attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she, she got that scholarship too. <laughs> she retired from the Wildwood Local District in 2004 after 35 years of service. During her teaching career in Wildwood, she served as health and physical education teacher, elementary counselor and she is married to Big Andy Days from Walls of Ohio. They are both Steeler fans. <laughs> I'm a Browns fan. <laughs> <laughs> In all these years of teach Karen's coaching, which is a long time, I never missed one track meet or one volleyball game, and I enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you very much. I'd like to present to you now my favorite daughter, and I love her very much, Karen Marie Dave Gibson. My dad said he's taking the elevator down, but I don't think we have one there. Uh, first of all, I'm, I'm quite honored by this. It's uh, probably one of the nicest things that ever happened to me. And I'd first like to thank my family. Because as a coach, you know you spend a lot of time away from home. And I've always had their support uh, of my husband, uh, my Uncle Don, and of course Uncle Mal, who's no longer with us. And of course my dad, who never missed anything that I ever did. <coughs> when I started in Wallsville, when I hired in, uh, Title IX helped me along. You know, the resurgence of girls' sports in the area, plus Title IX helped me too. Uh, I feel very fortunate to come along at the right time. Uh, <coughs> Ms. Jenkins was on the board at that time, and uh, many of us old-timers will remember Ms. Jenkins in her social studies class, and you did pretty much <laughs> what she did when. She says, well, Karen, you have your work cut out for you. I said, yes, Ms. Jenkins, I'll do my best. And it really turned out to be a love affair. I enjoyed every minute of it. Um, I had a lot of great athletes. And let me tell you, these girls were not only good athletes, but they were ready to compete. Uh, I'll never forget Pam Pulley in, in playing volleyball. Uh, her head and shoulders above the net just killing the ball. I mean, she, she could really do it. She was a fine athlete. Um, <coughs> in closing, I just want to tell everyone, even though Right now, we are much smaller in number as far as the number of kids we have in our school district. Uh, the Tiger Pride and Orange and Black Spirit is still very much with us today. Thank you. Before we get to the uh, benediction, some closing remarks, how about if we have one final standing round of ovation for all the inductees up here, please.
in John Henry's suit. There you go. <laughs> Uh, yes, also, if you are one of the first class members inducted here, would you please stand and receive a round of ovation for the people that missed that first one, please. A few closing remarks before, the, uh, before I give the benediction. Remember, this is reunion week. Wellsville's been doing this since 1950. Regardless of what anybody else says, that city up north, we started it. They try to take credit for it, but we started it since 1950. So there's a lot of more things going on uptown the rest of this week. Uh, also, don't forget mentioning the city up north. If you have any rooms in your house in 2010, and we have our next reunion, East Liverpool has theirs. It'll be the same weekend. So you may be able to rent your room out at a good price because you won't be able to get a hotel or motel within 100 miles of here in 2010. And the video, as I said before, go to www.wellsvillealumni.com. And in a few months, you may be able to see the order form on there to get the video of this induction ceremony, uh, video of the whole reunion, different things you would like to order. Just look on the website. Now, would you please stand for the benediction? With all the uh, turmoil in the world right now, what we need more than anything is peace. And I think what you saw up here tonight was a love professed by these inductees for the people of this village. If we could just spread that through the whole world, this is a prayer for peace. For the healing of the nations, Lord, we pray with one accord for a just and equal sharing of the things that this earth affords. To a life of love and action, help us rise and pledge our word. Lead us into freedom. We hope our prayer is heard. Redeem us from war and hatred because our lives are just on lease. Show us the path to your heavenly home so that all may come and go in peace. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There are some hors d'oeuvres left, I think, over there. If you want anything, please get it. Uh, I'm pretty sure these ladies and gentlemen will be available for some pictures, some autographs. Thank you.